In this tutorial, we will work on a chart design like this. You are probably exhausted of seeing charts like that and like that. We will use a tool from the insert shapes called a curve. It allows us to draw a completely custom shape. For example, we could draw something along our existing chart, as you can see. Then we can circle back, circle around, and once we click here, we will connect this object and the last click will create a new shape. How to create a design like that? Starting on a new slide, I want to establish the shape first. Go to Insert, Shapes, and select your curve. You can decide how this chart will look, but the most important thing is here that we will involve the entire slide. So I will start outside the slide. I'll go up, down, maybe once more down, up, down, higher, lower, higher, lower, and I'll end approximately here. I don't like how I did this, but that's no problem. Just click outside the screen, go under it, go around, and the last click will be connecting this entire shape. Now, you think you are probably right if you say that this is ugly. You can always right click and select edit points. At this point, I can adjust the points I've created to look a little bit better. I can even delete existing points to like even everything out. Okay, lower, higher, lower. Uh, I will bring this a bit lower, this a bit more to the, oh, sorry. I've created another point. Uh, it's a bit inconvenient sometimes. And perfect. This would be the design I've prepared. Let's not work on it further. I want to limit this shape to only this slide. I'll click on this shape, right click, format shape, and I want it to be a bit transparent. So I will see what's going on. I will create rectangles so they will help us get rid of the spare elements here. Insert, shapes, and I will insert a rectangle. I'm putting the rectangle on the edge. This shape is near to the edge, but with my arrow keys, I want to one, two, three, four, five, maybe put it five pixels above it because I'll give this shape an outline. And this outline would be visible here once I cut it. It will make sense a little later. Control D, place it on the left edge, one, two, three, four, five. And the last one, oh, it got away. And the last one on the bottom, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I left a bit of an edge. You need to click on the original shape. You need to press shift and click on the outer shapes. Use the merge shape functions and simply subtract. This way you will achieve this final shape. This final shape should be colored. How do we color it? We can go for a white color. Use a gradient. You can see we have a gradient with two colors, a white color and a blue color. I will take the white color and give it transparency, for example, like 50%. And the second color doesn't need transparency at this point. At this point, you probably want to give the background a color. As you can see, I gave it a blue, a purple, a red. Everything works pretty fine. I've tested a bunch of colors here. So I will simply eyedropper and I'll eyedrop one of the colors I have, for example, the purple one. Now this looks much better already. Click on this existing shape go to shape format and adjust the outline. As you can see, I have a blue outline here and I want a white outline. So shape outline, weight, and increase the weight to, for example, three points. This is why I left a bit of space on the slide so we don't see this outline on the left, bottom and right side. Okay, perfect. We've almost created the design. Now I want to add some lines. For example, here I made a sales report quarter three, so I needed like four spaces for January, February and March. You can do something very similar. Go to insert, shapes and use line. I will create a line. It doesn't matter where you place the line at the beginning. Uh, just create a line, press your shift key and put it down. This is the line. Uh, let me give it a white color so I see it. And I want to duplicate this line 12 times. So I have 13 lines in total. And the last line will end somewhere here. So line number one, number two, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, I have all of them. I'll put the last one here, just uh, before the edge. A little bit before the first one as well a little bit before the edge 
like that. And now I can select all of them without the middle shape. Shift click, click the middle shape away. I want only those items. I don't have to worry about them being distributed because I will go to shape format, align, distribute horizontally. Now they are perfectly distributed, align, align middle. Now they are perfectly equalized. I'll put them a bit higher so I can see them. Now, when it comes to their design, I'll press Ctrl G to make one shape of it. And I left a little bit space on the left side and the right side so I can easily click on the shape behind it. This is a little trick you can remember about. For the lines, let's make them a bit different. Um, we should give them transparency. We should, but I want them to be a gradient. A gradient with two colors. The first color should be transparent and the second color can be a little bit transparent as well. If you want, you can of course decide uh, upon this yourself. You, are, you have dash type. You can, for example, make uh, dots from it or they can stay as normal lines. I think this looks really, really beautiful. And this makes up the majority of our design. The rest is just adding a couple of text boxes and creating those informational elements. How did I do those informational elements? And they will be beautiful for animation, for explaining the presentation. Uh, it's not just about the text. For the text, I've used a nice font called Dosis. This is a font you need to install if you want to use the same font, but you don't have to use this font. Now let's create the point. Select my shortcut, Alt 2, and I will make a circle. I made the circle a pretty small circle, obviously. The circle can be simply white, but the outline, I want the outline to be like green, blue and red, which informs about growth, decrease and staying neutral. Okay, green, but as for the outline, we need to increase it to 4.5, four and a half points would be perfectly enough. Okay, make this smaller, put it into place, uh, smaller, smaller, like that. With my arrow keys, I can put it in the perfect place. When it comes to the information, it can be put above it can be put under it. It depends on you. I'll show you a nice trick because I can create a text. Um, I will put it here like 125%. That was what I did previously. I selected doses semi bold. I made it white and I'll put it here. Let's you can press Ctrl D and give additional information. Uh, I will call this context. It doesn't matter. Context. I will give it a doses light and beautiful. I want to group those elements, this and this, Ctrl G, this is now one group. Now I've selected a line and connected the line between this object and this shape. Insert, shapes, insert another line, and when you insert lines, as you can see, those little points appear, because lines can be connected to those points on, on shapes and on text boxes. This way, even if you move this text box, this line will move with it. Of course, this line is pretty ugly, so you will probably want to change the color to white. You want mm, the shape to be weight a little thicker and maybe give it some transparency. When it comes to its design, I will decide for a dash type. Mm, maybe those long dashes. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Or maybe mm, dots. Yeah, dots are a little more subtle. And if I increase the width, the dots will be simply a bit bigger. For the text, I will select the group. I'll put it a bit to the left side, just so the line gets like, mm, just so the line gets more straight. I want to group all of that, the line and the text, Ctrl G, and I have one informational box. You can imagine what I did here. I just duplicated this a couple of times. I placed it here. I will place another one here. Of course, you can change the color. It shouldn't be, the outline shouldn't be mm, green. It should be like red, which will symbolize a decrease. It could be in this place. And of course, you can move the text upwards. Remember that this line was connected to the top part of this text, but you can simply reconnect it to the bottom part. And beautiful, you would have the informations on this slide prepared. I did also a background here because for me, this was a little bit too empty. So I've used the, the existing shape. Remember, I've made it easy to click on it. Ctrl D, so you have one more of the same shapes. You want to enlarge it. This is just for design purposes, so it doesn't have to be accurate and you can place it behind it. It just makes for a nice, nice background. 
I will adjust this a little bit and you need to increase the transparency. You want to click on the color number one and increase the transparency like very heavily. Also the outline, the outline should not be there. Line, no line and beautiful. This is the design like, uh, like a background, which fills up the slide a little bit, but we still see the most relevant information. What I also did, I don't like that we have so much of this shape here. So I've created another round of uh, shapes. One shape here, one shape here, boom, this super old trick. Shift, shift, merge shapes and subtract them from this shape. I will animate only those informational boxes. Go to animations and a fly in, a split, a wipe will all look beautiful on those type of elements. Fly in, beautiful. Effect uh, from bottom is perfect. I will go to the animation pane, opening the animation pane, increasing the duration, double clicking on it, effect, smooth end, because I don't want it to fly in as quickly as it did. Really beautiful, maybe even double clicking and giving it a smooth start as well. Beautiful. I don't have to repeat the steps on the next animation because I can simply click on this element, animation painter, click on this one, animation painter and click on this last one. I hope this tutorial is informative. If you'd like to learn more about creating templates, slides and everything regarding PowerPoint, you have links to my online courses below. First and foremost, this will help you to become better at PowerPoint. And this is also a way to support my channel and generally support what I do. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. I've enjoyed to prepare it and hopefully we will see each other in other ones like that.